Welcome to Cleo Edison Oliver, Playground Millionaire, Chapter 2. As you listen, see if you can figure out who I am. Let's get started. Chapter 2. May the sales force be with you. Cleo taped her signs to the chain link fence that surrounded their front yard. Then she stacked avocados in neat pyramids on the table. Product display was a very important part of sales. Grandpa Williams had taught her that. He'd owned his own market until the grocery giant Winco opened nearby. She pulled out the cutting board and the knife she'd borrowed when mom had left the kitchen to help Julian find something in the boy's bedroom. Grandpa Williams said, Samples were a must in any quality produce department. Customers deserve no less. Plus, they increase sales. She was all set to sell when Julian and Barkley appeared. Her brother wore his fluorescent green Star Wars t-shirt with his orange, brown, and turquoise plaid shorts. To top it off, he had chosen his purple and gold Lakers knee socks each blazoned with a picture of Basketball Hall of Famer Magic Johnson going to the hoop. The outfit was hideous, but noticeable. With those clothes and a sign, he'd get everyone's attention. May the sales force be with you, she said, cracking up at her own joke and making Jay giggle. She just might have to trademark that. She set her brother on the corner with the sign, Save our dog! buy avocados, and told him to dance. Barkley lay at JJ's feet, looking very sad and overweight. People walking by with their dogs, people out jogging, even a few people in cars stopped to ask how buying avocados could save their dog. And then they bought avocados. Sometimes one, sometimes three or four. Miss Jean from next door tried to trade eggs from her backyard chickens, but Cleo held out for cash. She couldn't bank eggs. Not to mention, what would Horizon Home, the shelter for homeless moms and their kids that she gave her 10% to, do with a bait of egg? Fred and Pedro came by with their Jack Russell Terrier, Balmore. He and Barkley were good friends. They bought a whole dozen saying they'd do anything to save Balmore if he were in danger of eating himself to death. Cleo was at the avocado trees, replenishing her stock when JJ started dancing and flinging the sign around again. Hi, Grandpa Williams, he yelled. Want to buy something? What's your sister selling this time? His friendly voice came up from the street. Cleo's awesome avocados, Cleo shouted rushing back to the table. Best in all of Aldina Heights. The elderly man ambled down the sidewalk, leaning on his redwood walking stick with the dog's head handle. Good morning, Grandpa Williams, Cleo called, waving and smiling. He wasn't their actual grandpa. They just called him that. She'd been at the Williams's house the day before, getting her braids redone for the first day of school. Mom hired their granddaughter, Tasha, to do Cleo's hair and sometimes to babysit. Mom had learned a lot of things about African-American hair care, but doing tiny cornrow braids wasn't one of them. Her and Cleo's relationship couldn't handle tiny cornrow braids. How are my grandkids this fine Labor Day morning? Mr. Williams asked. Great! Cleo picked up a bag of avocados and held it open for him to see. Normally, I'd sell these for $4, but for you, I'll make it three, since you're part of my loyal customers program. He peered into the bag. Am I now? You've bought from all my businesses. Absolutely, although I still don't know how you convinced me I needed seven pairs of rainbow-striped toe socks. One for every day of the week or the dog leash decorative decals, since I don't own a dog. You can decorate other things with them. But I sure love my knitted coasters. Use them all the time. They were supposed to be Barbie rugs, 
but see, you found a perfect way to use those. He threw back his head and laughed. You got it right there, little sister. I sure do. Cleo held up a slice of avocado. Sample? She grinned. His eyes gleamed. My apprentice has learned well. He took a bite. That's some fine fruit. He slipped his hand into his jacket pocket and pulled out three shiny dollar coins, the gold kind that Cleo loved. He gave one to Julian and one to Cleo. This one is for Brother Joshua, he said, placing the last coin in her hand. She wanted to say that as president of the company, she made the final decisions, but she couldn't talk back to Grandpa Williams. Plus, Jay had helped. He deserved to be paid. She'd make sure Josh earned his dollar well. They said thank you, and then JJ zoomed off, shouting, I'm going to show Mom and Dad I got real gold. Grandpa Williams winked at her and gave Barkley's head a pat. Thanks for the awesome avocados. Don't forget to tell everyone you see that we're here, she said. He raised his cane as he walked away. Will do. Keep up the good work. Cleo was at the table counting her money when Josh came around the corner with his bin of dino formers. His L.A. Dodgers cap snugged his curly hair as usual. The hat, a gift from his and J.J.'s first mom, Melanie, never left his head when he was outdoors. 29. Cleo counted. Josh's eyes got huge when he saw her pile of dollar bills. Whoa! You made all that money? Uh-huh, and there's plenty more where this came from. She motioned to the trees in their yard. At least another $30 hung on the branches. Barkley hobbled over. Cleo kissed the top of the dog's head. Thanks for getting fat, Barks. I might have never realized what a gold mine I was sitting on. He held up an avocado. Green rolled. Josh set down his toy bin. Barkley stuck his nose into it around. No, Barkley, Josh pushed the dog's head away. Cleo finished counting the dollar bills, all 33 of them. This was the quickest and easiest money she'd ever made from a business. She sold plant bulbs. Mom hadn't been too happy when she found out Cleo had dug them up from her flower bed. Hand-drawn tattoos, god dyes, and rides on her slippers. Plus, products from a catalog, like tins of popcorn and the toe sock. Decorative decals, which could be used for dog leashes or other things. And Barbie rugs. But nothing had come close to generating this kind of dough. She couldn't believe this amazing business opportunity had been right in front of her face this whole time, and she missed it. Avocados just seem so, well avocado -y, bland and unexciting, and not a very attractive color of green. But people wanted them. Speaking of gold, help me sell and I'll give you this dollar. She held up the coin from Grandpa Williams. He held out his hand. That's mine already, JJ told me. Her shoulders drooped. Okay. She dropped the coin into his palm. Then he perked up again. Help me sell and I'll give you 25 cents a bag. She was feeling generous and she didn't want to be alone. That's not very much. Josh crossed his arms and narrowed his eyes. I've already sold 10 bags. 10 more and you'll have $2.50. $3.50 with Grandpa Williams's money to put towards that Nerf gun. What do I have to do? Here. She held out the Save Our Dog Buy Avocado sign. Just dance around on the corner like the pizza sign guy on Lake Avenue. The pizza sign guy was a real professional. He could do two complete spins while his sign was up in the air. No way. Too embarrassing. She shrugged. Fine by me. A silver SUV chugged up the street. Cleo ran to the curb waving the sign. Best avocados in all of Aldina Heights. Cheaper than the store. Great guacamole. The SUV drove past without slowing. Oh, well. She'd get the next one. 
She turned back to the table. Josh held up Mom's knife by its handle. Mom doesn't let you use this knife. It was true. The fancy Global Chef knife Mom had bought from the infomercial was off limits. How do you know? Because I heard her tell you you couldn't. That was a long time ago. No, it wasn't. Well, maybe she changed her mind. I'm telling her you took her knife. No, Josh! He started towards the gate. She dropped the sign and rushed after him. He walked faster. She had to be careful. He was holding a sharp knife, after all. Barkley barked, but didn't try to keep up with them. I'll give you another dollar. Just let me have it, Josh. He fumbled with the gate latch. You're going to be in big trouble. The little termite. Why did he always have to ruin everything? She snatched his hat and bolted. Give it back, he shouted. The knife clattered on the sidewalk. Barkley barked louder. Cleo couldn't afford to look back or worry about the knife now. She gripped her flip-flops with her toes and ran for her life. If Josh caught her, there was no telling what he'd do. He may only have been six to her ten, but he was strong, much stronger when he was mad. Josh sprinted behind her, screaming, past Miss Jean's house, past the Williamses, almost to Kaylee's, before she faked one way and went the other, barely escaping his grasp. She squealed at the thrill of almost getting caught and then giggled. It's not funny, Josh howled. Cleo turned tail and sprinted for home. Her only hope was to throw the hat at the last second, like a stake to a lion, and make a dash for her bedroom. You're mean! I hate you! Her brother was going berserk. Cleo's conscience pricked her into glancing back. Suddenly, she was stumbling over the bin of dino formers. She yelped and threw the hat at Josh, barely avoiding a crash landing. The cap bounced off his body. He crushed it underfoot as he plowed into her, sending her into the fence. The chain links rattled as he pummeled her. Barkley was also going berserk. Stop, Josh! I gave it back! She covered her face with her hands. The best she could do now was to protect herself from his fist. The screen door slammed open. Joshua Myron! Mom called. In a moment, she was there, prying him off. She wrapped her arms around him and held him like a human straitjacket. Shh, calm down. Her brother wheezed. Mom stuck his inhaler in his mouth. Breathe, Josh. He drew in a deep breath. His brown cheeks were tear-streaked. His upper lip was wet with snot. You can't do that, Josh. You can't hit when you're angry. Mom stroked his arm. She took my hat, Josh said fiercely. The hat sat crumbled on the ground. You took his hat? Mom's voice was as sharp as her global chef knife. Her blue eyes pierced Cleo. The horribleness of the trouble she was in crashed on her like a Zuma beach wave. Josh's hat was never to be taken from his head. It was practically the 11th commandment in their house. She stood and picked up the dented cap. Here, Josh. He pulled the hat down on his head, shooting her a fiery look. Then he picked up his bin of toys and stomped towards the gate like a gigantic dinoformer. Cleo held her breath, expecting him to say something about the knife. The knife! Barkley sniffed at it where it lay on the sidewalk. If he stayed right there, maybe Mom wouldn't see it. Why, Cleo? Why are you always pushing the limits? You know that hat is out of bounds. He started it. It doesn't matter. You don't take off his hat. Mom stared at her disapprovingly. I expect a serious apology from you. Sorry, Josh. She called to his back. No! Mom's hands flew up in frustration. A genuine apology. After thinking about what you've done for an hour in your room. What about my business? She looked at the small pile of avocados still needing to be sold. At her signs hanging on the chain link fence. 
It can wait. Push everything against the fence and let's go. Cleo dragged the table towards the fence. She wished she had the power to make things disappear, thinking mostly about the knife, but a little about her brother. Why did he have to be such a baby? What did he think would happen if he didn't wear that raggedy hat outside? The sky would fall on his head? At least he had a birth mom who sent him presents. Cleo picked up her money container. Maybe if she distracted her mom, she wouldn't notice the knife. Mom, guess what? I made $33. Mom's eyes widened. Wow. For a moment, she looked genuinely impressed. But her tough mom face quickly returned. Now inside. Cleo glanced to where the knife had been. Barkley lay on the ground with it between his teeth, gnawing on the handle. No, Barkley, drop it. Fortunately, he obeyed. Mom stared, open mouthed at the knife. What is that doing out here? She said, fists on hips. Triple fudge and fidget air. Cleo rushed over and picked up the knife. Mom, listen, I had a great idea. Samples. Mom was waiting, wanting to be persuaded. People can't resist samples, Mom. Did you know that samples increase sales by 28%? Cleo didn't know for sure, but it sounded about right. Mom crossed her arms, blinked. Cleo held up the money container again. I can make more, lots more. Mom shook her head, looking seriously disappointed in her one and only daughter. Cleo, I don't really care about the money. I care that you took what wasn't yours without asking. Twice. Cleo's shoulders drooped. The container hung at her side. I needed it to cut the avocados. You're not allowed to cut with it. You know that. It's a very sharp knife, Cleo. The sharpest one I have. It's also my best knife, not to be flung around outside or chewed on by the dog. She held out her hand. Cleo gave her the knife. But I'm almost 11. I can handle it. You don't get to decide that. I was careful. I didn't hurt myself. I'm glad, but that's not the point. Mom sighed. I'm sorry, Cleo, but you pushed too far this time. Business is over. You're done for the day. So, did you figure out who I am? Do you know the name of this mystery reader? It is... It's me, Miss Gimble. I hope you enjoyed reading with me today. Tune in tomorrow for the next chapter of Cleo, Playground Millionaire, and Another Mystery Reader. Bye!